Good morning, everybody. God bless you. Yes, 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 yes. He's a peace who has broken down every wall. He is a peace. He is a peace. He is a peace. Who has broken down every wall? He is a peace. He is a so why don't you cast all your cares on him? For he cares for you. He is of peace. He is of peace. So cast all your cares on him. For he cares Open the doors are open. Get your friend, get your enemy, get your sister, get your wife, get your brother, get everybody they can get. It's Sanctify Sunday Wisdom for Women. We are here, life and direct. God is our peace. Who has broken down every wall? Today is is it's gonna be ripping, it's gonna be flying, it's gonna be just it's gonna be you know, it's, it's just gonna be. Because God is our peace. So make sure you don't do this alone. Like, share, and tag somebody on this. Because we all need some peace. Don't you think so? And it starts from me. It starts from you. Stop pointing the finger at nobody else. Yes, he is our peace. He is our peace. So let us cast all our cares on him. today oh father in the name of jesus we thank you you are our peace we come in your presence today you said you are our peace you said you give us your peace in fact you said you live your peace thank you lord god almighty hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord today 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 y'all today we're going to be looking at the life of solomon uncle solo's women Ooh, you don't know how many women were in Uncle Solomon's life. King Solomon. Ooh, follow him, follow him in First Kings chapter 3. We got to follow him right there. The man was popping it. The man was not taking it easy. Uh, he, I mean, I, 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 also, I also came to a realization. Where did Solomon learn all this? He learned this from his father, but you know, he, he went over David. Went above David. He said, David, I see what you do. Because that's how you learned it. Because I had said myself, how did Solomon learn how to marry all these women? Where did he get it from? He saw his dad. See, fathers, be careful. Listen, I am not, I said I'm too little for, for to talk about men. My friend yesterday was like, oh, I don't want wisdom for women. I want wisdom for men. Well, 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 hopefully a man somewhere out there that is following the Lord Jesus will say, okay, you know what the Bible says in Romans 15? That 
all that is written before time is for our learning. It's time for the men to, to begin to learn from the men in the Bible. So where did Solomon learn? Let me say it again. Where did Solomon learn about collecting women as a collection? Because women became to him a collection. Mm -hmm. He learned it from David, his father. Okay? So what are you learning? What are you teaching the people behind you? But, you know, like I said, that's for... Oh, you know, that's for... I am talking about Solomon's women because this is wisdom for women. So we got to learn from the women that were in Solomon's life. We are going to learn today. So I'm super excited. And um, Solomon loved the Lord. That was, that was, he started loving the Lord. So it's not, it's not, thank you for joining with me today. I see you. Uh, thank you so much. So make, make sure you share this and tag and like and share with somebody. Solomon loved the Lord. So it's not how well you started. Let me say that again. It's not how well you started. How do you finish? The Bible says that I'm endure to the end. So there is an endured listen. Listen to others people that, don't listen to us people that tell you, oh, you're supposed to, it, the Christian work is a cake walk. <laughs> Even cake is heavy. Flour is bitter. When you take the flour by itself, it's bitter. But when you make it, that's why they put sugar to make it sweet. So cake walk, there's bitterness. Jesus said in this life, we're going to have tribulation. Oh, in everything, everything in life, there's going to be that part that is bitter. But the key thing is when we continue in him, so Solomon loved the Lord. Solomon loved the Lord. How do I know that? The Bible tells me that in 1 Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings chapter 3. The Bible says that Solomon loved the Lord. Yes. Solomon, uh, 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 3. It says Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father. He had a command. He had a command, and I've seen, I go through the book of Kings, 1st Kings, 2nd Kings, you will see that this king loved the Lord, but his heart was not right. This one followed the Lord, but there was, I was like, why, we, why the but? The Bible says if we continue in him, there's a continuing in him that is required in this age and hour. So let's go ahead and look at Solomon's women. And so, 1st Kings chapter 3, verse 1, Solomon made a marriage alliance. So that's why I said Solomon was collecting women. Like it was a collection for him. <laughs> he was a collection. Are you a... Uh, okay, so you woman that is listening to me. Are you a collection? Are you one of the collections? You know, last week we said when they call your name, when they, when they sit at the ECA Wood Joint or at the sports bar or wherever they sit, when they begin to talk about the women in their life, are you going to be one of the collections? Are they collecting you? You have to make your relationship very, 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 like I said last week, very, very, you have to have a mind, very, very mindful of your relationship with the opposite sex. Or with, yes, wisdom for women, even you as a man too. Are you a collection? So we see that in Solomon, in 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 1. Solomon made a marriage alliance with Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David. Pharaoh's daughter was a collection for him. How many wives? How many concubines? 700 and 300. 1,000. Don't be a collection. Woman, make up in your mind that you're not going to be a collection. Um, unfortunately, sometimes I don't know what's going on in our mind, though. I was talking to some of my colleagues, uh, you know, during the week, and, you know, the area of divorce, remarriage, and all that, and she was like, so are you saying if I'm not happy, I should be doomed? I'm like, how in the world you not being, happy, being married means you're doomed as a woman? Hmm, let us think a little bit. Don't be somebody's collection. When they say, I have reached dear, I don't go dear, I don't come out. You go and try your luck too. These are the things you can tell. These are the things you can use. If you give her iPhone, you go enter, you go come out. If you give her Samsung, maybe if you pay her rent for one month, maybe if you buy a Benz, or you buy a car, or you buy a Shelby, or you buy a, you know, a hat, or you buy a jewelry, 
you can enter and come out. Solomon had a collection. Women became to him a collection. You have to make sure that you're nobody's collection. Be very, very careful. You're not doomed if you're not married. Let me say it now. So you are single out there. Or your husband is misbehaving. Your husband left. That doesn't mean you are doomed. I have a father. He is husband to the husbandless. He is father to the fatherless. He is the husband to the widows. Connect with him. That is the man that will not fail you. No, he's not a man. God says he's not a man. That is the one that will not fail you. That is the one that does not compare you with nobody. That is the one that is not looking at whether you are beautiful or not. That is the one that does not look how you woke up and did not wake up this morning. He do what he wants to do in your life. He is God. Okay? I Listen here. He is God. He does not look at your good to do you good. He does not look at how much you bring him to see whether he's going to be good to you or not. Do not be somebody's collection. Don't be. You have to make up in your mind. You have to make sure that in every relationship you are in charge, you are in control. Don't let nobody take your control. Because when they can control you with a phone, or control you with jewelry, or control you with a trip abroad, or control you with a vacation to the island, or control you with a package, with money, whether it's in hard or soft currency, if they can control you, they are in control. Do not be a collection. You know, this is not really where I was going to go this morning, but the Holy Ghost is saying some, something to somebody today. Because women, my heart goes out for women. You know, just that lady that said, am I to be doomed? Am I to carry my cushy to the grave? What are you doing with the cushy anyway? You want to go to hell? No. Nobody is worth going to hell for. Let me say that again. Nobody is worth going to hell for. And nothing in this life is worth going to hell for. Everything you see, the Bible says, all that we see, whatever you can see with your eyes, whatever I can see with my eyes, is going to pass away. It is going to pass away. The king today will die tomorrow. Yeah, even though some, some kings will make you want to believe that they are immortal, uh -uh, but only God is immortal. We are but mortal men. The king today must, oh, did do, do, it is compulsory that the king must die today because the word of God says it is appointed for man. Death is an appointment. I always say, people, death is not evil, though. There's nothing evil about death. Uh -uh. Death is simply an appointment that we all must keep, regardless of who you are. Rich or poor, mm -hmm. beautiful according to the world standard, or not beautiful according to the world standard, it doesn't matter. President or no president, president or commoner, they call them. We put these tags on people, but all of us must keep that appointment. So let's go back to Solomon's women. Don't be a collection, that's number one. Then number two, Solomon loved many foreign women he loved the moabite that you find in first Kings chapter 11. he loved the moabite the ammonite the etite the edomite the sidonians the egyptians of course he saw pharaoh's daughter these are the people that god said god gave a commandment and i read that from first samuel chapter first samuel chapter 25. <clears throat> and when the lord has uh, okay Yeah, God gave a commandment. That's David. I'm going to read that later. But God gave a commandment and told the children of Israel, do not find, do not be attached to the foreign women because they are going to turn your heart away from me. It was a commandment that God gave. And let's read that. God said to, to, to um, Moses, and he said to the children of Israel, be separate. 
he told Jinnah of Israel, do not go after foreign women. Why? He gave them a reason why. He says, because they're going to turn your heart away from me. They're going to make you serve other gods. They're going to turn your heart away from me. God gave a reason. God, you know, God don't just, it's not because God hates us. No. When God gave us instruction and commandments to keep, it is for our good. When he told you of Israel, when you want to pull, go away, far away, do it and cover it. It was for infection control. Infection control did not start in our own time. God said it. God did it. When somebody is leprous, is leprous put them away. Let them not be in the midst of the people. And we also, I also saw a king in Israel who was leprosy, who was leprous. And so what happened? He was confined into a place. This is what God did for the people. It is for our own good. And I see these, the sons of the um, the sons of Maccabees. And they said, whatever God has said to us and the old man, it is for our own good. If God said don't eat pork, it's for our own good. If God said don't do this, it was for our own good. And so in we will see in um we will see that when solomon now joined himself to these women they actually turned his heart away from god they turned solomon's heart away from god god appeared to solomon twice which king did God appear to? God appeared to Solomon twice. But the and God told him and gave him an instruction. He said, if you do what I have commanded you to do, these are the things that I will do for you. I will be with you like I was with David, your father. But this one thing do not do. But that one thing that God said Solomon not to do, Solomon decided I am going to do it. And so these women successfully turned his heart away from God. So this is number two for the women today. Women have caused plenty downfall, fortunately or unfortunately. It is happening in a society, it has happened in society past, it is happening now. Remember Delilah we talked about last week, Samson's women? Yeah, she caused Samson's downfall. That's what a woman can do. But so how do you influence? Remember Jezebel? We talked about Jezebel too. She caused Ahab's downfall. The Bible says that I think it was not evil enough for Ahab. Ahab himself had his own, you know, Ahab also had his own issue. But then the Bible says he had it unto himself, Jezebel. So evil plus evil to the how many power, to the 10th power, to the 100th power, that's what they became. They became a power, evil power, evil couple with power. Evil couple. That is what Jezebel did to Ahab. And so, this is what the women that Solomon brought, the Moabitish women, the Ammonites, the Etites, the Edomites, the Sidonians, and the Egyptians, all these women caused Solomon's heart to go away. They influenced Solomon negatively. That's where I'm going. Are you, as a woman, what kind of influence are you? Or what kind of influencer are you? Are you a good influencer or are you a bad influencer? How do you influence your community? How do you influence your, you, starting from, your, from yourself, how do you influence yourself? How do you influence your area, your father, your mother, now if you're married, your, your home? How do you influence in the church? What is your influence? At your job, what is your influence? Is it good or bad? Amongst your friends, what kind of influence do you have? Are you a bad influencer? Or do you influence for good? So I'm going to go to the area of peace. In Matthew chapter 5, he says, Blessed are the peacemakers. Jezebel was not able to um, help Ahab make peace with God. All these women, the Moabitish, the Sidonians, the um, Etites, the Ammonite women, were not able and are not able to help Solomon make peace and keep peace with God because it is not in them. You can only give what you have. And that's why God warned us. He said, do not be unequally yoked. When you're unequally yoked with an unbeliever, woman, listen to me and say that, oh, I'm going to change that man. You better think again because you're not God. You cannot say, oh, I'm going to influence him. I'm going to make him turn to God. You cannot do that. No, you cannot. 
are you able with your peace that you have in you so even before you can give peace you yourself must have peace and who is peace jesus his name is the prince of peace now if you don't have jesus inside of you you ain't got peace you may have the appearance of peace but you cannot influence with peace you cannot influence with peace because you don't have the peace resident inside of you jesus said my peace i give to you my peace i live with you so around us we must endeavor to make sure that we are peaceful in matthew chapter 5 he said blessed are the peacemakers matthew chapter 5 verse 9 blessed are the peacemakers that is how to influence positively that's what i'm encouraging you this time with solomon's women they influence solomon negatively so we're going to look at positive how can i influence what can i do but before you can get to be able to do and give peace and be a, an influencer of peace and be somebody that you know when people are fighting you don't go in there and say oh i heard what she said i did it gossip does not does not create peace you know things happen and i was like oh then I want to say something to somebody else about it. I say, no, you don't say that. Because when you, got, when you say that, you're going to change that person's mind about somebody else. That is gossip. That is not peaceful. Well, how will I be able to do that? If myself, I don't have the spirit of God in me, that will tell me, no, don't do it. So coming to you, you are watching or you are listening today. And you don't have the spirit of God inside of you. Today is a day. Now is a time for you to begin to seek for that Holy Spirit to come and indwell you because the Holy Spirit that will cause us is only the one. He is a Prince of Peace that will cause us to live at peace. He says what? Well, we should be at peace with all people. And I was going to read um, first, I was going to read um, Abigail, 1 Samuel 25. And let's see what she did. This is an example of how you can influence positively. Abigail in the book of 1 Kings 20, 1 Samuel 25, verse 32. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who sent you this day to meet me. Blessed be your discretion, and blessed be you. Be discreet. Blessed be Abigail. You think when it was the first person that said, Oh, blessed, no, 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 no. They are blessed, blessed, even you. Once you stay in the place of peace, once I stay in the place of peacemaker. Matthew 5 9. Blessed are the peacemakers. Helping people to make peace with God. Helping people to stay in the place with God. That's what I'm doing today. Now, if you're out there and you're not at peace with God, and you're out there and you're influencing in a bad way, then you can make a change today. Like who did that? Ruth Moabitis. Ruth is a Moabitite woman. God, even though God warned them not to be associ associated with the women of Moab, Ruth said to Naomi, your God will be my God. So she turned around. She repented. Opa went back to her people, the Bible says, and her God. But Ruth stuck with Naomi and Naomi's God and Naomi's people. So there's always a point where we can come back. For us to be able to be this instrument that God wants us to be in our time and influence positively. So if you are out there, don't be an upper. You can influence positively. Be like Ruth. Be like Abigail. The only way is you yourself need to turn back to the Prince of Peace. You yourself need to come to the Prince of Peace. You yourself need to say, come and resident inside of me. Jesus said, ah, me and the Father will come and we will dwell inside of you. We will soak with you. And that's the only way we can now do what? Give peace it, to ourselves and to our Jerusalem and to our Judea and to the uttermost part wherever we go. Our job, our friends, when they see you, they see peace coming. When they see you, they know peace is coming. You know, if they don't see you and they feel like, oh, katakata don't come. Trouble is here. They get on land. No. They should see you and see peace. They should not call your name and say, Oh, Joy said this, 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 this. Oh, you know what Joy said about uh, Peter? Oh, you know what Joy said about Jane? Oh, you know what Joy said about Hannah? No. Your name should not be mentioned. 
because if you have the Prince of Peace resident inside of you, you radiate peace. You give peace. When they want to scatter, you are the one that say, "Uh, uh, hey, come on, let's do it this way. Let's let's not do that. Let's not let's understand. Let's investigate." But you, can, we cannot do that if we don't have that peace resident inside of us. Jesus is that peace. So if you're out there, you don't know Jesus, this is another opportunity for you. This, this is you learning that you can know Jesus. Paul said that I may know him. Ah, Moses said, show me your glory. Do you want to know Jesus? Do you want to know that Prince of Peace? So you can have peace in you because you have to have peace in you first before you can give peace. The problem is that we're always trying to give what we don't have. And I also have another woman here, Rahab from Jericho. We find that in Joshua chapter 2. She was also one of these people that God said don't deal with. But Rahab did what? Rahab believed in the God of Israel. And Rahab took a step towards the God of Israel. And God said what? He said if you come to me. If you draw closer to me. I will draw closer to you. You don't have to remain a Moabitish woman. You don't have to remain an Egyptian woman. You don't have to remain an Ammonite woman. You don't have to remain an Ittite woman. You don't have to remain a Sidonian woman. You can change like Ruth. You can take a step towards God. You can be like Rahab. And she came down in the genealogy. These two women, my God, they came in the genealogy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What are you talking about? Oh, Father, you can make a you can change today. You come on, you can decamp. Anybody can decamp. Okay, people decamp to go the other side. No, you can decamp and come this side. Oh, who is on the Lord's side? Who is on the Lord's side? Are you going to come to the Lord's side today? Are you going to take a step towards God? Because if you don't have the Prince of Peace, you can give that peace. So, all these women in Solomon's life did not have this Prince of Peace, so they couldn't give it. They can, they, it's not in them to give. So the only way that you can be a peace producer, a peace distributor, is to make sure you come into the Prince of Peace. And you let the Prince of Peace get, I mean, resident in you. Are you ready today? You can do it today. There is no tomorrow waiting for nobody. You can make a, take a step towards God today. How do I do that, Joy? Listen, it's simple. Just tell the Lord, I'm about to come to you. That's what Ruth did. Ruth just packed her baggage and followed Naomi. That's what Rahab did. Rahab just opened her house to the people and showed them a way out. And they said, put a red scarlet scene. Put it outside where we see it. That is what, the, see, Rahab accepted her position. She was a harlot. So they said, put that to red. Let us see it. God is seeing us already. There's nothing to hide. So you can come to God today. You can say, God, here am I. And begin to take a step towards God and begin to repent of your sins. He says, How? Say, men and brethren, what shall we do to be saved? What shall we do to be saved? Ah, uh, hey, hey, it's not it, okay. What shall we do to be saved? They said to them, What? Repent. What is repentance? It's simply turning away from the way I used to live. If I used to lie, I lie no more. I pick my Bible and begin to examine the word i begin to seek for god in the word when i see the light in the word i do it and i pray god come into my heart he said get baptized so look for a church that the listen water baptism not sprinkling now and say i want to be baptized in water because they told them repent and be baptized and what the water baptism is done you say i need the holy ghost jesus say what ask for the holy ghost and the father that is in heaven we give you that holy ghost that is where your peace comes Hallelujah. And he will come inside of you and he will dwell inside of you. Be a good influencer. How do you be a good influencer? Start with yourself. Influence yourself by, by aligning with God. Align yourself with God so that God can influence through you. That is the key. Align yourself with God so that God can influence through you. And God is waiting for that woman that is going to pick up this I like this button and say, I'm running. Yes, because Christ, Christian race is a, that's what's a Christian, being a Christian is a race. Paul said, I have run my course. Jesus said, it is finished. It is a race that we have to run and we run to finish. We don't run to stop halfway. We, don't, mm -mm, we have to finish. And I'm trusting the Lord that as you pick up this today, that you will run with the aim to finish 
the race. Don't stop halfway. Continue to distribute that peace wherever you are. Continue to get people to be at peace with God. Be at peace with God. That is the key. We are let here. My husband usually say, if God don't need us anymore, we get one again. We die. No. But we are let here so that we can reconcile. Yes, that ministry of reconciliation. That is where peace comes in. Jesus did what? Jesus Father, the Father came in Jesus to reconcile us back to Himself, and now we have received that ministry of reconciliation to reconcile men back to God. What is reconciliation? Peace. Peace is what we bring. We bring people to be at peace with God. But first, me, you, we have to be at peace with God so that we can be distributors of this reconciliation that God has given to us to reach out other men. So today, God bless you, my sister. If you are out there, I am praying with you that the Lord Jesus will give you a heart to seek after him. That the Lord Jesus will take out every heart of stone and put in us a heart of flesh that we may know him. I am praying with you that as you make it, make up in your mind today to follow the Lord Jesus, I, he's a covenant-keeping God. He says, if you draw nearer to me, I will draw nearer to you. That the, as you begin to draw nearer to the Lord today, that the Lord will draw nearer to you today too in the name of jesus so listen very simple repent of your sins make up in your mind that you're going to stop the things that you do begin to draw nearer to god through his word these are his love letters to us these are the words that he has given to us uh-huh find a bible believing church that believe in this bible not that bring the things of the world into the church you know but find a bible believing church get baptized in water seek for the holy ghost continue in the word continue in prayer and as you draw closer to him he says he will draw closer to you god keeps covenant god keeps oath he had a covenant with abraham isaac and jacob and he's still keeping it he had a oath with joy with jesus and he's still keeping it today through us so what are you doing come on the winning side come to jesus today pick up a bible if you don't have a bible text me dm me by the grace of God, we'll make one available to you so that you can draw closer and nearer to God. And as you draw, as we draw, not to you only, but we are because we are in this together. Yes, we are in this race together. We're in this race together. So as you run, I run. We run with a aim to get to the end. With a aim to go away with a medal. And what is that medal? Eternal life. Hallelujah. So, my beloved sister out there, be encouraged in the Lord. Don't give up trusting in God. Don't keep up walking in God. Yeah, you may walk and you may fall, but that is part of running. Uh-huh, you fall, but you get up and you do it again. You keep going again. You keep pressing again. You keep running again. For the Bible says that if the righteous fall seven times, that righteous will rise up. That is the difference. We don't fall and stay down. We fall, yes, but we get up and we keep going because we have, <laughs> we have a goal. We have a mission. We have something we're looking at, a trophy, eternal life ahead of us. And we ain't going to let nothing stop us. Don't let nothing stop you as you continue this journey. So God bless you. God bless you so very plenty. Thank you for hanging out with me today. And like I said, love this, share this, tag this. Help somebody to come into that place of reconciliation with God. Reconcile to God first. You can change. You don't have to end up like the women of Solomon. You can change. We have seen women who have turned around. Ruth, Moabite woman, she turned around. She influenced Naomi positively. You can do the same. Rahab, the same thing. So you can do the same. You can turn around. You can repent. Everybody can repent. Everybody can repent. Everybody can repent. Repentance is for everybody. Oh. So I'm calling. I'm calling out to you today. Don't give up. If you are falling before, rise up. Rise up. Yeah, yeah, you did that thing until you're not going to do it again. That's okay rise up and pray that's why we seek the holy ghost the bible says jesus told us tarry until you be filled with the holy ghost when we fill with him we receive power that's where our power is to be what to be his witnesses so you need that holy ghost in you so we can continue to live only for god when he comes inside of us he makes us holy you and i don't have power to make ourselves holy so god bless you we will see you again next time if the lord tarries all right, so stay in peace.
seek for peace and seek for the Prince of Peace to come into your life and take control of your life. He is the master. He is not just master over everything else, but you know, he is master and lord over me first before everything else that I have. Hallelujah. He has to master me, conquer me, rule in me. All right. God bless you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. We will be back by the grace of God. If the Lord tarries, hallelujah. Amen. He is our peace who has broken down every wall. Yes, he is. He is our peace. Hey, hey. He is our peace. Oh, yes, he is. He is our peace who has broken down every wall. Yes, he is our peace. Hallelujah. He is our peace. Have a blessed week. Hallelujah.